I, uh, the Lord has been putting this message on me and my heart for uh, quite a while. I kind of sort of resisted it because it's probably one of those messages that has been probably more uh, looked at from a diverse uh, angles and argued about and disagreed about it. And uh, uh, so I, uh, I, I will, will not uh, pretend that I now I got the answer for everybody. The, you, uh, I know that there's probably going to be different opinions about that. That is quite all right, but through my life I've uh, studied it. I've uh, seen different things. I've been in different areas, and so I am going to try to to bring this to the balance the best I can possibly do. For that, I have a little bit of uh, uh, things here to, to illustrate this. Uh, I'm going to use in a, in a bit. So uh, bear with me here for a second until I get organized. And then uh, we'll uh, uh, the, look at this. The uh, Joel was uh, I, uh, probably a couple of hundred of years before the, the, this event happened. He saw a thing and I, I, I saw kind of wondered whether Joel would have uh, been saying to in his heart, boy, I just wish I could be, live long enough to see this. And he saw that, and we are in preparation of uh, uh, Eastern is approaching, and then 50 days after it's, uh, the day of Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit was poured out. But many, many of times, we do know that as human beings, uh, if you're not prepared for something, it can just slip right by us and we don't even notice it, right? And it's not that we talk about a day. Uh, I think every day is uh, as a day of Pentecost. We could experience the fullness or the baptism or what uh, uh, of the Holy Spirit. And uh, I'm just going to go through some steps here. Let's uh, 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 a couple of uh, last time actually I preached in English. Somebody approached me and said, uh, uh, "You didn't even preach the message that uh, was on the bulletin." Uh, I did preach the message, but I didn't read the Bible verse that was on the bulletin. So uh, I do appreciate corrections, and and I, I'm still learning. I'm young. I. Uh, I can I can still learn. Open your Bibles to the book of Joel, or if you have your bulletins, you have got got it on there. <coughs> in the book of Joel, chapter two, verse twenty-eight says, "And it shall come to pass afterward that that uh, there actually there is no no comment there. there says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams." Your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, and upon the, the in those days will I pour out my spirit. And in the book of John, chapter seven, it says, uh, "In the last days, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink.'" He that believeth on me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believed on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard the saying, said, All of, of a truth, this is the prophet. Uh, I'm going to illustrate here a little bit. Uh, do you see any water in this cup? Do you know, I, 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 I want to illustrate this as best as I can. The, say this is the spirit that's poured out. I got to position myself to receive, and I'm going to put this cup in here so you can see the cup, because this is what I want you to see. Now, I'm going to pour a little bit. Does this cup have some water now? And, and, and of course, when we get saved, we get saved through the works of the Holy Spirit, right? 
And uh, and the first uh, point it's it's it, it, it's it's talking about in, in Titus three verse three it says for we ourselves also are sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving the de- uh, devils, lost in pleasures, living in the middle uh, in malice and in envy, hating and uh, uh, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the uh, uh, kindness of the love of God's or Savior towered man appeared, not by works of righteousness that we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of, of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. Now when Jesus gave the Holy Spirit, and, 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 and there is an, an uh, 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 in other words, that, that the Bible says that God does not give the Spirit by measure, or Jesus didn't get the Spirit by measure. Uh, God, I do not believe that God gives us a little bit and then gives us a little bit more. Uh, I do believe that we, through the Spirit, that we are saved. It was the pulling of the Holy Spirit that brought us to conviction that we needed a Savior, and it was the Holy Spirit that released us from the bondage that we could come. Unless the Holy Spirit will draw, they cannot come, the Bible says. So it was the Holy Spirit that drew you so that you could come. He got you free enough so that you could come. But I do not believe that that means that, that we are filled with the Holy Spirit the moment that we first believe. We, we are. We got uh, some of that. But let's see a few more verses. But when the uh, fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem uh, them that were under the law, that we might receive the, uh, the adoption of son. And because ye are sons, God had sent forth his spirit of the son into our hearts, crying, Abba. Father, Abba Father means that this is a term, a term experiencing from uh, uh, of warm affections and a filial uh, confidence. That is what it means, Abba Father, which is there is that warm connection there, and uh, that is uh, of uh, of course through. Through our Savior, when we got saved, we have we become we have now a Father, and that is through the birth of the Holy Spirit. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. And John chapter three explains it very clearly. And I will go on and 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 show you why I why I said in Romans chapter eight verse nine it says, "But ye are not uh, of the flesh, but of the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you." Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is not of his. Uh, and that's, of course, it's, it's received through faith. And, and the Bible very clearly states of how does faith come? You cannot get, go to the grocery store and buy a bag of faith. You can buy fertilizer. You can buy sugar by the kilo. You can buy a f- two by four by the footage. But you cannot buy faith. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing, in hearing the word of God. So then when you start hearing the word of God, you have the word of God. You believe, but as you increase in learning, you get more. And the Bible says that the word is spirit. So then, so if we have the Word of God and we have the Spirit of God, but then if we keep on learning, we get more of the Word of God in our hearts. So that means that we get more of the Spirit of God in our hearts, right? So that is, uh, uh, it's not that God doesn't give us more, it's we don't, sometimes don't position ourselves in receiving. For instance, like all that being said, if we get so busy and work and other activities that we all don't have time to read the Word of God, our filling is going to be slow. 
But if you take time to read and meditate and put the Word of God in your heart, then you're going to get more, and it's up, and it's it's there for you to get it. But there's a part that is trusted of uh, us that we will seek after and dedicate time to it and search for it and fill our hearts with it. And then it says, and if you fill yourself, then it comes to the point where you just can't contain it anymore. You just got to bubble over. Some of you can't be quiet. You tried. Some people have said already, you talk too much, and just said, okay, well, I won't say it anymore. I remember my brother, one of my brothers, uh, uh, his wife uh, uh, wanted to know about God, and he wanted, she wanted my brother to come to, uh, to go to our place, and my brother said, no, 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 I don't want to go over there. The only thing that guy talks about is the Bible and Jesus. I don't want to go there. But uh, uh, she wanted to come, and, and, and she got uh, Jesus, and she was could not stop talking. And I've also, in times past, decided I'm not going to talk to the people anymore. I'm going to live my life before them. You know what? It doesn't work. A family reunion, uh, they, they didn't like me there because they talked too much about the Bible. You still did. They said, don't you have a normal life that you can talk about? Well, that was a normal life. For me, it was a normal life, the Word of God. And so then I decided I was not going to talk about it anymore. I'll just live it and, and, and enjoy it. But you know what? Then they started asking me questions. It wasn't my fault. and It was their fault. That they, they were not even used to, to uh, listen to me. And they thought whatever I had to say wasn't very much if I couldn't talk about the Bible. And so then they wanted me to talk, so then the only thing they figured they could do is ask me questions about the Bible, and I'd talk. And it is true, isn't it so, so true that, uh, that uh, when we fill ourselves with the Word of God, they say, oh, the abundance of the heart and mouth will speak. In Luke chapter uh, 11, verse 13, says, If ye them being... Evil, know how to give good, give, good, give good gifts uh, to your children. How much more shall the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those that ask Him? Uh, I've uh, said this a lot of times. You don't just go and ask that God will give you the Holy Spirit and go to a store and buy a Coke and go in the shade and drink the Coke and wait for the Holy Spirit to come on you. Just while you're waiting... You might want to be searching. Praying and reading God's Word is a, the best way to be full of the Holy Spirit. And uh, I'll uh, pour a little bit more in here now. So that's, it's about as full as you can get it, right? Without spilling. In Luke chapter 1, 4 verse 1, it says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. I, I thought it was quite, quite an interesting thing. When we are praying for the Holy Spirit to fill us, what do we expect is going to happen to us? We just think that we're going to have this fuzzy, warm feeling. <laughs> uh, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. <laughs> How many of you want to be a full of the Holy Spirit? Oh, I didn't mean to say this to you so you'd be scared of it. <laughs> but do you know that a lot of times that we just... Think that if you're full of the Holy Spirit, we're going to have this funny jewelry feeling and it's going to be so good. And it is. It is absolutely, it is. But it is amazing that what the, 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 the purpose that was given here, it says and that Jesus was led by the Spirit. And Jesus was in the river and, and was got, got baptized and he heard his voice and the people heard his voice. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well 
pleased and then the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove came over Jesus and it was a great feeling I'm pretty sure and all the people I were, I'm pretty sure they were in awe but they were just would have loved it just to, to say well let's pitch a tent here this is a good place to be but you know it's an, it's an amazing thing that that God if he fills us with the Holy Spirit that there is an equipping for that for something there then and Jesus was equipped to resist very first of all he was tempted by the enemy that was one of the first purposes that jesus experienced of the fullness of the holy spirit he was had a power he gotten the, the the ability to resist the enemy it's the first thing that we do need before we go to other places we gotta learn how to uh, handle the enemy in our own lives, the deception in our own lives before we go and minister to us. Isn't that amazing how easily it is to give uh, an advice to somebody else and then ne the next day it happens to you and you're all bent out of shape? Have anybody ever experienced that? Oh, come on, let me see here. Oh, some of you are not honest at all. I am very sure you've given somebody a very good advice and when it happens to you, you just, oh, I wish I wouldn't have said it. Now i got to love it. <laughs> it's so true. It happens to us. But you know, it's the fully filling of the Holy Spirit that's, and we all get tempted and it's amazing that when you know the Word of God, the enemy comes to you with the Word of God and see if he can by your own emotion, by your own feeling, your own circumstances, he then will use those kind of things as, are you really a Christian? If you were really, would this all happen to you? And then he does that. He does that to us. If you're really a Christian, this shouldn't be happening. This shouldn't be happening. But why not? And then it says in the book of Acts, Wherefore, brethren, look ye uh, in Acts 6.3, Look ye uh, out amongst your seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Spirit, uh, ho uh, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, who we may appoint over this uh, business, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to be and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole uh, 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 multitude, and they choose. And that mentions Stephen and more, but I just want to point to, to Stephen. That uh, these were men full, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. I almost think that the Holy Ghost doesn't work without the spirit of wisdom. Right? In the book of uh, Acts, when they, when they uh, were going to build a temple, uh, <coughs> That they they were instructed to find these men that had a spirit of wisdom to do artwork. So it required spiritual men to do spiritual work, but they were wise people. And I and I think sometimes there is the greatest wisdom in the church, it's not being used. It's so unfair that the world gets all the wisdom for technology and there is so little of that happens in churches to where the, the Word of God or the, the work of God is being blessed through all of those, the spirit of wisdom. But it's actually the wisdom was given by God, right? So it seems like the world gets better service than God gets because they do more creative thinking. Because there's money behind that. But in the kingdom of God, there's eternal values behind it. You don't get your reward on earth, but you get it afterwards. We always want to just the immediate, right? Uh, how many of, uh, you don't have to lift up your hand, but how many of you have at least $10,000 in your bank account for retirement? Don't answer that. And many of you probably would raise your hand and you wouldn't have it. And why not? It's because you don't think about retirement. And you probably won't retire. I don't know. <laughs> Jesus might come before that. But it just says also something about us that we are just the moment per people. We don't think about 
future. And the Bible says, do not store up treasures on earth where mutton, those kind of things can eat it. And, but uh, gather treasures in heaven, Wolford challenged us this morning to give uh, go and bring the gospel to the lost so that uh, we would up treasure, uh, 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 have treasures in heaven. And then uh, later on in, in Acts chapter 6, the, the Bible talks about where, where then uh, Stephen was tried and, and brought before the council and then he was stoned to death. And uh, amazing thing, he sees heaven open and the glory of God descending. And the reason why he could do that was... Uh, because he was full of the Holy Spirit. He was full of the Holy Spirit. That is why he could handle that. That's why he didn't see evil people. That's not he want, no, That's why he didn't complain. And that's not why he didn't ask, why me, Lord? I'm, I'm just a new guy in this team. But he was full of the Holy Spirit and could handle persecution. So next time you go through struggles in your life, <clears throat> And you want to bend all out of shape, just ask yourself, what do I need to be able to see heavens open and the glory of God descending? And that is, you need to fill yourself with the word of God and with prayer full of the Holy Spirit. Right? And so, uh, is that understandable so far? <clears throat> There's many, many other, <clears throat> other things that probably some people... <clears throat> disagree on and if you go to extremes you could probably go in different ways but I, I certainly do believe that, that uh, the Holy Spirit is given to us to, for a proof that there is a power within us that's above human abilities. Ephesians 5.18 <clears throat> and be not drunk with wine wherein there is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all, uh, for all uh, things unto God uh, and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Submit yourself one to another in the fear of God. I, I think it's just a very interesting, this passage to hear that, that uh, the, the Bible says, Don't be full of wine. Any drunker could preach this passage very good. If you have a little drink, you won't get drunk. But if you have a little more, you will get drunk. And if you take a little more, it'll run over. Not this way, but uh, it will run over. And so when you are a little bit, when you have a little bit of the Word of God and you, it, it, it says that uh, you have the Word of God, it's the Spirit of God that's in you. But the Word is Spirit. So then, say, so don't be drunk with wine, but be full of the Holy Spirit. So then we need to drink a little more. We got to get ourselves more busy in the Word of God. It's so, so, so tremendously easy to get up in the morning and, uh, and uh, get off doing your work. But I would, and I have said this over and over, make time. You know what? In the morning is the best time because you're going to get out there in the world and you're going to be challenged if you get in the word of god before you go to work it would it will work for you the word of god will work for you <clears throat> and the drunkard knows that he's got a drunkard that drinks wine and knows that he's got to do some actions he's got to go and get whatever he's going to drink and he's going to have to pay for whatever he's going to have to buy, to buy to drink and so as we as as uh, sometimes as we as christians we just think that it just come over us all of a sudden freely by itself and 
and <clears throat> some of them might be blessed it might happen that they they get full of the Holy Spirit and some easier than the other ways some have to work harder than another others to to uh, to get the Word of God and, and then to memorize the Word of God is such a tremendous way of doing it so that that way the Word of God can just pop in your mind and you can or power the enemy and then it says in the results of that speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord giving thanks you ever heard anybody that hits his finger a little bit and there is no song and there is no melody there is just something and it isn't unto the Lord of hosts, it's the other Lord. You pop a black word of that and then uh, I've probably said this before, there's a man that uh, this happened in Mexico, he, he uh, happened, something happened to him and he said a bad word and turned around the pastor standing behind him and says, oops, past, sorry pastor, this is the last demon that was out of the end there. And the pastor said, no, 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 no. There's more, there's a lot of it because they couldn't fit in there more. That's why the one came out. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. <laughs> so if it comes out, it's pretty a clear evidence that there's probably a lot of those in. And to get rid of those, uh, the best way is to get others in, right? To fill yourself with others so that the other one doesn't have room. And there he's got to leave. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, a lot of people determine the fullness of the Holy Spirit by emotions or by some sort of feeling. And we do know that they, they will produce feeling, absolutely. But feeling is just an overflow of the reality. And I've said that a lot of times that uh, emotions without, uh, fate without emotions is dead. And uh, emotions without faith is just hot air. It's just something will blow away. And as soon as the momentarily and right after that, you're, that, that's gone and it's nothing. So faith comes by hearing. But if it's the living spirit that's in us, it has emotions that brings joy. And, and you can see that there uh, in uh, where Stephen was stoned. And you can also see that here that that. The fullness of the Holy Spirit will produce in you uh, speaking to yourself in psalms, in, uh, in hymns and spiritual songs. I, uh, I always remember when we had the flood in, in Wayapan, uh, I got up in the morning and, and, and this Holy Spirit led very heavily on my heart, sing. And do uh, you know how difficult it is to sing when you don't know if your grandchildren or your kids are still alive? You know how hard it is to sing when the river is roaring behind you? Have you ever tried it? How hard it is to sing when it looks like that everything could fall apart in a second? And the people are just sobbing, walking back and forth on the streets. And you hear the deep sobbing in the people's heart and whispering and some crying. You hear the crying at the other end of town, help. And then the Holy Spirit reminds you that this is the best time that you need to sing. And I walk down the streets and I sing, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't sound good when I sing, when I'm full of joy, and I'm pretty sure, uh, sure that, that was, uh, to the ear probably doesn't sound the greatest melody or the greatest singer that was singing. It didn't cause nobody to yell, woohoo! But uh, I felt a prompt and I went to my family and I told them, pray and sing. You know, and, and I stood there for about 15 minutes trying to encourage them to sing. And you know, that didn't happen. They did after I gone a little, uh, was gone a little ways. They started singing, but it was a tremendously hard. I walked in the water, and the water came into my boots. I walked down there, and I was able to walk with my boots on. When I came back, the water started coming into my boots, and then up to my knees, and up to half my legs. And, I, and the Holy Spirit prompted me to sing. Sing, because the Spirit 
God inhabits praise. You know, it's so evident when you, when you get there and you do it. How, and then we went back home and we prayed. And there was a small group of people, about seven people all together. We prayed there. And uh, later we heard a testimony. They said that, that it sounded like there was a multitude of people praying. And the greatest prayer that I'd ever heard, a soft, like a soft music prayer. We knew it wasn't just us, that the Holy Spirit was in there. And that if they heard our voices, they must have heard it through the power of the Holy Spirit because there was nothing out of us. And there's many, many times in your life where you go through very difficult situation and uh, it seemed like you can barely make it as a very, very good indication you need a little bit more of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 7, verse 45, and when they heard these things, they were caught in their heart and they gnashed their, uh, on him with their teeth. And it's talking about Stephen. And, and uh, can you picture this picture? There's the uh, full of the Holy Spirit, and these guys are coming. You hear those teeth just grinding? And uh, it's at him, and, and uh, it, it, he wasn't disturbed by that. He didn't uh, pray any evil on the people. He prayed that God will not hold it in their charge, that he would forgive them. Jesus himself, was, he was on the cross, he prayed that, that, those, that, the, the, that the Father would forgive them, for they did not know what they were doing. And so that's... that's that's the fullness of the Holy Spirit that will produce that. In 1 Peter uh, chapter 4, verse 10, and uh, through 15, it says, As every man hath received a gift, even so minister the same unto uh, others. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God, if any man speak, let him speak the oracles of God. Oracles means the Bible, the Word of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of, of uh, the ability which God gave it, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold these, behold, uh, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which uh, is to try you, as though some strange things happen unto you, but rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be uh, glad also with exceeding joy, and if ye be Reproach for the name uh, of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of uh, the glory of God rested upon you. Uh, uh, on their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of your suffering as, uh, as a, uh, but let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody to other men's matters. The scripture here clearly indicates that, that uh, the, the, the uh, reason for the Holy Spirit is to equip you when other people do things according to you, uh, uh, to you so that you will not, even when your thoughts have if, uh, wrong thoughts, about them so that you will uh, be able to rejoice when you're being spoken bad about. And how many of you know that there's no good feeling when somebody says all kinds of wrong things about you? It is not a matter of having a good feeling. If you don't have the Word of God, know that you can rejoice when they say all kinds of evil, of course lying, because they uh, uh, did that to Jesus, right? Uh, uh, we're not to, to please all men. We're supposed to, 
be uh, people that would speak the word, the truth, and love. We should not look for trouble, but we should never hold back speaking the truth either. If that, if that means getting in trouble, then it is the question what are, who you want to be in trouble with, with God or with man. And I've decided that I'd rather be in trouble with man, but God will be pleased. And I certainly do always are very careful that I won't um, purposely say anything that will provoke others for just uh, being mad at me. But uh, <clears throat> the Word of God is a good way of living, and there is no better way of living there is no better way to live than having the Word of God inside of you so that when you go through those kind of things that Word of God will minister to you then and knows the next step that's going to happen after you go through after you go through this and then there's another word that talks about the baptism of the Holy Spirit you I know I'm pretty sure that there's none of here that doesn't know what it means baptism right uh, for some, they might not be familiar with the word. Baptism means immersed, gone under. Uh, that's what the word baptism means. That's when you're covered completely under. And uh, when you're baptized, and it, it, there's a couple of times that the Word of God uses the word baptism where you have just no control. When you are baptized, and in, in, in Romans it talks about the baptism buried in Christ, and it uses the word burying. So I, I always say when you bury a person, you do not let his hands stick out so that he could wave for help. Or you don't even let a nose stick out so that he could, if, just in case you needs to breathe, so you can breathe. And uh, so then the whole, because what happens if you do leave the hand out or the foot? So you could kick those that come by again, that does dead us to or whatever. What happens to it? would be probably a bad smell after, right? So you'd, you, it is, I'm just saying this to, to say what, what, it, what the word means, baptism. And then in uh, Luke chapter 3, verse 16, says, John's, uh, John answering, saying unto them, to them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but uh, one mightier than I cometh, the uh, latches of whose shoes I am not worthy to un unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. And uh, I don't know if we can really uh, say what the baptism of uh, the Holy Ghost in fire, but I know what that means, the fire. Fire will burn, and then what burns the first is the shaft, right? Always the straw, the dust, that which is is uh, the lightest it usually burns the first. And so on, that, 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 that when the, the Holy Spirit comes and we get baptized, isn't that amazing how those things that has no value are the first ones to burn off of us? It's true. It's so true that this, those silliness, those other things, had no value, no use for anything. Those were the first ones that the Holy Spirit started dealing with us. It's a fire, it's a consuming fire, but it doesn't consume us, it consumes the sin within us. And that's and, and, and then there's another purpose for it too. And, and uh, Wolford mentioned of that, that uh, his, uh, uh, Jeremiah had this feeling that there was like fire shot up in him that just would just... Uh, uh, there's one thing that they, they, have, they say in Spanish, there's no laziness in fire. You might be lazy, but when it starts burning, you move. When the Holy Spirit comes on to, uh, there is something that causes us to move. We, do, we cannot stay still when the, fire of the, when the power of the Holy Spirit comes on us and that's burning inside of us. We just, just got to move. There's just no way you can't. Stay still. Have anybody of you ever experienced a late at night? You uh, are sleeping. All of a sudden, you're awake. Wake up and and uh, and you're just you can't stay in bed. You got to get out in there on your knees and praying. 
or sometimes you're you're in, in your house and, or in your car, whatever it is, and all of a sudden there comes something in your mind. There's a, just a tremendous burden for somebody. And, uh, and you immediately say, well, I should probably go over there and talk to him. And if you can, you will. Because you can't just... When you're baptized, you don't have no control. of. That's when you're controlled. There's no control on your part when you're baptized uh, and the Holy Spirit, then is the Holy Spirit, and of course, God will never come against your will, but then He'll get your complete will, and then He moves. You just do whatever the Word of God says, there's just no holding back. You are out of control in this situation, and you just have to do what the Word of God says. That is how I would define the baptism. And then Acts chapter 1 says, For truly John baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost uh, not many days hence. And he spoke unto the disciples, and you know what happened the day of Pentecost. So they, uh, they were all in one accord, in one place. And I got to go back and, and say this again. Uh, have any one of you ever... Have, have or has had a person that says that you think can get easily under your skin? It just annoys you very easy. Do you know uh, the passage we read? It's, uh, it's, that's where you need the power of the Holy Spirit to love them. And to love them as, you don't know, necessarily have to like them the same but Christ loved them and we too, too have to love them. They were all in one accord. I'm pretty sure they had different opinions. I'm pretty sure they had different approaches about doing things. But they were all in one accord, in one place, and they were praying and they were waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. We are easily to jump the gun sometimes. So... The Bible says in John, it says, He that believeth on me, out of his valley shall flow rivers of living water that will run over. And so that is, when it runs over, that is more than you can contain. That's when other gets, others get the benefit. When it runs over, that's when others get the benefit. You know what? Really, Christ created us and saved us to have to, to, for the benefit of the body of Christ. You know that he saved us that we could uh, be a blessing to others. Not that we could just be a happy day, go to heaven and one day and don't... You know, last, uh, the uh, rich man got a pretty good glimpse of this, but a little bit late. When he's, he's in hell, he wanted to go back to evangelize. He says, Father Abraham, send one of those. that they go tell my brothers, when you're full of the Holy Spirit flowing over, you go and tell your brothers. You would, uh, Wolford all said, I say, you will start in Jerusalem. And you will go uh, to Samaria and Judea and the rest of the world. If you fill yourself to overflow, if you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, there will be no control. And I, I don't know what it will take, and I don't know if you're willing to stick enough time to in the Word of God until we can't contain it anymore, until we got to go and bubble over. I don't know if you're willing to pay the price, but it's all a matter of, of how much you're willing to get in depth in the Word of God, fill yourself until you can't hold it anymore, and you got to go and then and, uh, and I'm going to talk on a subject here that is uh, uh, I don't know what uh, your opinion about this but this and 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 in First Corinthians chapter fourteen uh, Paul is talking about uh, uh, the the gifts of the Holy Spirit and then in verse twelve he says even so ye for as much as ye are zealous of the sp uh, spiritual gift seek that ye may excel in the edifying of the church. Wherefore, let uh, him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What uh, is it then 
Will I pray with the Spirit? And what I, what is it then? I will pray in the Spirit, and I will also I will sing. Uh, let me just go. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with understanding also. One of there is there is different kind of tongue. This is the best way I'm gonna be, be able to explain that tongues is one before you got saved, uh, and I know what happened to me before I got saved. They uh, uh, I, out of my mouth there was just constantly common other language. Out of that there was glorifying God, bad words, a lot of that. Uh, I remember one, my, my, my brother, one of my brothers-in-law, he just came here, and he's, uh, he's been here many years, still doesn't speak English. He was here two days working in tobacco, and he came home one evening, he says, I know half the lang English language. I said, really? Whoa! You always had a difficult learning, and now you know half? I've been here years, and I don't know. And he said one word, and he said every other word, they used that word. I won't say it. And uh, so he alert, figured he had learned half the English language. But when you get saved, you start speaking in other tongues. Your tongues get converted. Your speech is not the same anymore. How many can testify to that? You had a faulty language, now you don't use those words anymore. You speak in other tongues. And then there's another tongue in the book of Acts to say that everybody heard the message in their own language, in their own tongue. God is able to use you, to give you a language that you might not have learned if somebody beside you is not saved. He's going to save them. You are full. You have the burden. God is able to use you to speak a different dialect or language, if you want to, to, so that they can hear the gospel. One thing I always say, you should never limit the Holy Spirit. I do remember a man one time saying, uh, speaking, uh, uh, and he said that uh, he was in a jet, and he had witnessed to a man, and uh, this man just rejected him. He wanted to give him a business card. He didn't even want his business card. So then, uh, oops. so this, uh, all of a sudden, the, 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 the Holy Spirit prompted and in his heart, he said, she should utter some words. And he said, well, what do I have? And they said, just trust me. And he said that all of a sudden, uh, uh, he said, okay, Lord, I will trust you. So then he spoke, and this other guy looked at him. Where did you learn that language? You just spoke in my language. That man, after they gotten off the plane, asked this guy for a book that he had offered him uh, uh, earlier and was accepted his business card, later came to the church and got saved. This man had to trust himself completely in the hand of God, be willing to look silly if it so it be, huh? He had no idea what he had said. But God was able, and he did it on the day of Pentecost. And then it also, Paul is saying that there, there is an unknown tongues that edifies the spirit. The head knowledge doesn't get it. The head doesn't get it. Your spirit gets edified. But then he also says what is important when, when you do get edified, everybody needs edification, don't you? Anybody that says you don't, you're in trouble. Everybody needs to be edified. So, in, and I am not going to say that, that, and I've heard all kinds of stuff that I thought was just completely nonsense. And I've heard where other people were, yeah, you just follow, just repeat after me, and they blubber some kinds of things, and they do not, their spirit does not get edified. I've, you see it on the fruit later. I'm not, and encouraged that they not, they do not believe that it's all, at all. You can just, be silent, be fruitless in your mind, in the presence of God, and uh, 
have a desire in your heart. And if it comes that out of your mouth, without your head knowing about what you're really saying, without any thoughts, you're filling yourself with the Holy Spirit. You're in the presence of God. You need edification. But he, Paul says, when you come among people, you got to think. Then you got to think how you're going to say that. When you're by yourself, it doesn't matter if it comes out backwards or whatever. If you're in the Spirit, in the spirit of the Lord, in the, in the presence of God, you don't need to worry about what you're saying. Well, when you come into people, you want to edify. When you're among the people, you want to edify the people. But one thing I want to emphasize, emphasize again, do not limit the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit does give you an utterance of tongues, then don't limit him. But you know one thing it is, uh, and uh, uh, I've heard a little lot of counsel on that, that one is that what, if you open yourself up, then the evil spirit could come in. Not if you're full of the word of God. Not if you're in the presence of God. You don't ever have to worry about. And, and I do remember an experience, again, I said, an experience that are very different from yours. But I do remember in my own lives, where I opened myself up, to the Lord and did lift it out my hands, did things like that. I, I'm not saying that that that, that I have uh, I've had uh, uh, the the ability or the gift of speaking in tongues when I didn't expect it. That hasn't uh, hasn't occurred frequently, but I've had it. It's been a huge blessing, and it can come out in a different way to you. That is a huge blessing. One of that I shared before, that I had just tremendous fear before that. One of those times, it just, well, on my knees, lifting up my hands to the Lord and said, Lord, I, I just want to be full of you because I know the Spirit is in me right now. It's not of your Spirit. So then I lifted up my hands and worshiped the, the Lord in the middle of fear. And something happened in my life that I've never been a fear, afraid of those things anymore. And those are steps in our lives, and they are, they are certain measures that we grow up in, and so that God doesn't give us the Spirit, but we receive it by measure. He doesn't give it to us by measure. I have, a, uh, I, I think I need to quit there, but uh, I have a, a desire that, that we would uh, work, that we would be, that we would have the desire to be full in, of the Holy Spirit, and not <clears throat> try to figure it all out, but get yourself in the Word of God. Get yourself in prayer in the Word of God. And the Word of God is the measure of what the strength that you're going to have. This is just no other way. I've seen others that spoke in tongues and they have no ground in the Word of God. You know what? We call them, should I say it? Granola bar Christians. You know what they are? Fruits, flakes, and nuts. They just momentarily, they, they just, oh, choo! and next time, they do all kinds of other things. You know, you need to be careful of that. It's just not an instant emotion. It's something solid that we can daily be full of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Let's pray. Father, I gave you praise, honor, and glory. Thank you, Jesus, for your love, your mercy. Thank you that you are now limited to give us everything that we need for life and godliness. And that is the first thing that you have desired, that we would be full of uh, that life and godliness and, and willing to minister to others. That is why you have saved us. That's why you have filled us. And Lord, I pray for everyone here this morning that they would have clear in their heart. There would be no confusion. And Lord, you are not a God of confusion. And Lord, anything that isn't for them for now. And Lord, I just pray that you would uh, uh, continue working in our hearts. And that we would, uh, you would, uh, through your spirit, prompt us that we would stay in your word. Fill ourselves, our mind, and our hearts with your word. And Lord Jesus that we would then be doers of the word and not only hearers. In Jesus' name, amen.